And we are live. And I see we're too far away. Let me bring you guys a little bit closer. I always think I'm ready. And then I have to do something else. So let me just bring this closer. Let's see how to do now. Okay, cool. All right. So welcome to another live cook with me. And I just thought it would be fun to do another cook with me video. I um, was trying to figure out a way to use up some of this leftover Christmas ham. And I found this really delicious looking recipe on Taste of Home. And I thought, well, let me just give that a try. So for those of you out there in YouTube land, hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining me. I can't see any of the names that are there from here. But I just do want to say hello. And you know, after the hustle and bustle of the holidays, and we take a couple days eating leftovers, we're trying to figure out new ways to cook things other than just using the same old tried and true things that we normally do. So I thought, how can I make this ham a little bit different? And I found the recipe for a cheesy ham and grits casserole. So let's get that started. Now we need to have three cups of chicken broth and I do have low sodium chicken broth. I want you to see that because when I looked at a couple of the reviews, some of the people thought that the recipe was a little salty. And my husband was saying he didn't want me to add any extra salt to it. So I thought, well, I'll use low sodium chicken broth. So low salt chicken broth. So I've got that. And then we also add in a cup of grits and we put the grits in the um, chicken broth. And I've never done that before. So I thought I would give that a try as well. So I'm going to pour a couple, a cup of grits. And these are the quick cooking grits. And I've learned to pour it over the counter rather than right here so I don't make a huge mess. But these are actually the Quaker Quick Grits. Now, Quick Grits are actually grits that take about five minutes to cook. They don't cook very fast at all. So I will get a wooden spoon. Now, I already put my three cups of chicken broth in this pot because this little heater doesn't stay hot as long as I would like. So I got the chicken broth heated up, started over there. So I've got three cups of chicken broth in and now I'm gonna add one cup of grits and I'm going to add the grits, grits slowly as I stir, because I don't wanna have any lumps. And normally I would add, oh, about half a teaspoon of salt with the grits because you know, grits can be a little bland if you don't season them. But since I looked at the reviews and the other lady said that the recipe can be a little salty if you're not careful or, <clears throat> excuse me, if your ham is too salty. And my husband said he thought this ham was a little salty. Now, I didn't think it was all that salty, but it just could have been too. We've not been using a lot of real salty foods lately. So you're going to be more sensitive to it when you're not using a lot of salt. So I'm not going to add any extra salt. Plus, there's a lot of cheese that goes in this recipe too. And you know, cheese has a lot of salt in it as well. So, so as soon as I get this, To a point, I will come over there and see who's there so I can say hello to people. So I need to cover this. And 
and I've got my oven turned on and set to 350. And I've got one and a half cups of ham already cut into bite-sized pieces, just little bit, bits of cubes of ham. And it also calls for three green onions. Well, I didn't have any green onions and I wasn't running out to the store to buy green onions, but I did have some shives growing in my yard. And the weather has been such that the shives are still growing. So I went out and I cut enough of those to use. And you know, they've got kind of a light flavor, very similar to the green onions, so they'll be fine in that respect. And the grits are starting to thicken up, and I want to let them cook and thicken up for about five minutes. Because it will take them about that long to cook. Now, I have to tell you, I did not grow up eating grits. When I was younger at home, we mostly had cream of wheat. So if we ever had grits, it was like a special occasion. But since I've become an adult and had my own family, my husband's family ate grits more often. And I have to tell you, some of the best grits I've had in my life, two times. One, Mr. Jordan made them. That's my husband's dad. Mr. Jordan made the best grits. And the second time was when we went to Kentucky to take our state board of nursing licensing exam. Uh, at that time, you either took your exam in Indiana or in Kentucky, and they kind of rotated what year it was going to be offered. And at this particular time, we had to drive to Kentucky. And so me and the girls that I went with, we were staying at a hotel, and they had grits on the menu in the hotel. Oh, my goodness, were those grits delicious. But I think what I do need to do, because I keep filling this here, let me grab a barrette, cook, cook this hair out of the way. Be right back. Didn't see a barrette in there, but I did find um, a little headband. So I used that to pull my hair back because I don't want to keep falling in my face while I'm trying to cook. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So since I'm taking a minute, why don't I see who's here and I can say hello. All right, so we've got Miss Congeniality. Hey, Nanny J. Hi, Nanny. Hello, Susan from Indianapolis. I'm glad to hear. Nancy from St. Louis. Hey, Nicholas. Hi. Nanny says I've got her with grits, ham, and cheese. I have to tell you what, I am not a big cheesy grits person. I like my uh, grits with um, butter and sugar. And I know. There's a whole big thing about whether or not about whether or not you should put sugar in grits or if it should be salt and pepper. There's a whole big school of thought where there was a big discussion about it on Roland Martin. But like I said, we didn't grow up eating grits a lot at home. So when we did have it, my mom used it sort of like a cereal. So let me just see if these are done. need to cook a little longer so I'm going to add some more chicken broth and like I said this is the low sodium chicken broth free range chickens and all that kind of stuff I forgot I had poured some extra in a cup just in case I needed it and I'm eating it. So it calls for three cups, but I'm thinking four cups might be better because it takes about that much for it to be able to cook long enough where it doesn't stick, but it gets done. And I'm using my Curtis Stone cookware. I just love this cookware set. I can whisk in it too if I need to. I try not to, but I can. 
there. So I've used four cups of chicken broth. But this allows me time to let it simmer just a little bit more. And I know the grits will cook a little bit more while they're in the oven, but still. And I've already got my oven on and heat it to 350. All right. So the next thing I need to do is cube up my cheese. But like I was telling you guys earlier, I'm not a big cheesy grit person, but my husband loves them and my son-in-law loves cheesy grits as well. But I do like cheesy grits if there's something kind of interesting or special going on about it. So now, right now, I am cubing up this Velveeta cheese. You're supposed to use some processed cheese is what the recipe calls for, which, of course, is Velveeta or Velveeta-like cheese. And that's what you use in the casserole dish itself. So I'm just going to make a few cubes of that. And the other thing is that I'm also cooking from my preps. So I have purchased three cartons of Velveeta cheese and had them, the two pound cartons, and had them on my prep shelf. But as you know, there is an expiration date. So you do need to make sure that you're checking on your preps and then using those things from your preps because there's no point in preparing and saving up all this food if you let it go bad and then you're not able to use it. So I've got five ounces here of cubed Velveeta cheese right there. Now my fingers are sticky. So I'll get them right off. And then we also, now this is, was a relatively healthy recipe, so to speak. They wanted you to use an egg substitute, but I was just trying to make this from things that I already had right here. So I didn't have any of the egg substitutes, but I do have eggs. And so I'm using three medium to large eggs in place of the egg substitute that they called for. And one of the ladies that had made the recipe said that for this particular one, in place of the egg substitute that it called for, that you needed three eggs. So I've got my three eggs right here. And what I am going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the grits into the eggs and kind of stir it down just a little bit to kind of get this um, egg mixture into the grits. But what I don't want to do is throw all these eggs in and then cook the eggs and I've got scrambled eggs in the grits. So I don't want to do that. So I probably should have gotten a bigger bowl. Whereas I thought I had one big enough. I obviously did not. And I do that all the time. I don't know why I always get the wrong size bowl. I always end up with a bowl that's a little bit smaller than what I actually need. But okay, so now I've got this egg whisked up. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of these grits. I'm gonna give them another good stir. Yeah, see they're thickening it up nicely. We'll give them another taste to see how they're. And I'm so glad you guys could join me today. So I'm going to take just a little bit of the grits and just kind of stir them around in the egg. And just a little bit more. So 
because I'm trying to bring the eggs up a little bit to temperature. And they're coming along nicely. I'll show them to you in just a second. You guys will get a good laugh too. Now I'm going to show them to you very carefully. You may or may not be able to see them. We'll see. But I have to tell you guys what I did earlier. I have, we had made um, a casserole earlier because one of the things that I've learned when I'm doing this Cook With Me Live is that sometimes you need to have something to show because I don't want you guys to have to wait 35 minutes while the casserole is in the oven baking. So I made one ahead and now I'm making one for you. And I was showing my daughter, now let me show you now. So, don't you know if I'm going to be able to show you guys this? No, I'm not. We'll see. So, here is the egg and grit mixture. I've mixed the grits into the eggs. So you can kind of see how it's looking. So, I think now I'm going to go ahead and get the egg mixture in the grits. I'm just going to pour it in and stir it as I go. And this just kind of helps to bring that egg to temperature so you don't end up with scrambled eggs in your grits, which nobody wants that. It's really interesting to me, too, to try to practice and learn to cook on camera. It's more than a notion. Okay, so now I've got this stirred pretty good. And I'll just kind of, you can just see how, you can see the thickness of the grits now. It's more yellow because the eggs are all in there. And don't taste it because we've got raw eggs in here. So if you're one of those that like to taste things, don't taste this mixture now because we've got the raw eggs in here. So now I need to add my cheese and my milk. So I'm going to add butter. So I need two tablespoons of butter. And for my young homemakers out there, in case you don't know, on the side of the butter packet, you've got your measurements for tablespoons. And so you can like cut one right there and there's one tablespoon and another one right here. So I'm going to just go here, cause this is just a half a stick right now. And you can just cut through the packet. And you've got about the amount of butter that you need. I'm gonna cube it just a little bit though so it doesn't take quite as long to melt. And for those of you who are watching and are saying, seriously, do you really think you need to tell us that the measurements are on the side of the bowl, of the butter packet? Well, yeah. For my young homemakers who are just learning to cook, they don't always know that. And sometimes I've got some very young homemakers that are joining me. So now I'm going to add the um, cheese. And I have five ounces of Velveeta cheese. And I used my postal scale to measure it just to make sure because because it's always difficult for me to measure five ounces like that. If it's liquid, that kind of thing, I don't have a problem. So I've got two ounces of milk, or shall I say a quarter cup of milk, 2% milk, but I'm going to wait until I get the cheese melted and the butter melted before I add that because I don't want it to cool it off too much. But it's melting nicely. So you can see like here's a couple of the lumps of the cheese. But it's gradually melting.
Now I'm going to add the milk. And this is the hardest part of this whole casserole is getting the cheese to melt. Other than that, hey, it's pretty easy. Well, I take it back. Cutting up the ham, that took a little bit of time as well. So let me just check and make sure I got everything in. So I've got in the uh, grits, the egg, the cheese, the milk, butter. Once it's melted, I'll add in my ham and my greens and my seasoning. So I'll get them over here. Oh, one of the other ladies talked about using some salsa, con queso. And I thought, I'm going to try that. I've only got a little bit left in here. But it's not a hot salsa, con queso. It it's, has a little bit of um, flavor to it, but it's not one of those hot. Hot one. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and use that. Now that jar is used up. So that was another reason why I wanted to do that. Oh, I don't know. I was talking earlier about my preps. So on your prep shelf, you need to be checking the foods on your shelf so that they don't expire. And I've had this Velveeta cheese on there for over a year. And I thought, you know, I should probably start using that. I don't use Velveeta a lot. I used to use it a lot to make mac and cheese when the kids were little because they loved it. So I used it quite a bit, but I don't use it quite as much today. Got a couple more lumps of cheese in here. The other thing I want to show you guys once I get this in the oven is I want to show you my new planner, one of my new planners that I'm going to be using as my catch-all or day-to-day -day planner to help me manage my home. And so if you've got your new planner, get it out. And once I get this in the oven, we can talk about that piece. Okay, so looks like this, the cheese is melted pretty good and you can see the color is a little bit more yellow. So now I'm going to add my cup and a half of cubed ham. And this ham was really delicious. It was really good. So I'm really looking forward to tasting it. Now, I did say that I did make a casserole earlier, but I didn't cut into it because I wanted you to see it. I wanted to try to do like they do on the magic of television where... They have you, they make the dish and then seconds later, they've got a finished product to show. And one of the things that I've learned when I try to cook on camera is the value of being able to do a taste test. So I made one ahead of time so you can see what it looks like when it's actually set and finished and then we'll get that out. All right, I think I've got everything in here. Oh, I don't have the spices in. <laughs> so I'm going to put in just a couple of dashes of red, crushed red pepper flakes. A couple of dashes of that. And then I'm going to use one eighth. And it calls for a quarter cup. I mean, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm just going to use one eighth because I don't like things to be too hot or too highly seasoned. And then a quarter teaspoon of uh, garlic salt. Not garlic salt, but garlic powder. And remember, I said that since we've got raw egg in here, this is not something you can taste. Let me just double check and make sure I've got everything in here. Three cups of chicken broth, one cup, cup of grits. We've got the eggs, the cheese, the milk, the butter, the cubed ham. And the ham is fully cooked. Make sure that's a, that's a big factor. Uh, the three green onions chopped. I didn't add the quarter teaspoon of salt. 
but I do have in one quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, one quarter, one eighth teaspoon of pepper, because I didn't want it to be too hot, and just a couple dashes of uh, red pepper flakes, and we've got the shredded cheddar. And then we take a three quarter cups of shredded cheddar on top. So now let's put it in a dish. So this is one of those old Corning World, Corning World dishes that almost everyone has. And just about every new bride gets one as a wedding gift or she picks up one for herself. So most homes will have these 11 by 7 casserole dishes. And again, it's just like this. Just a plain old uh, anchor hocking or Corning Ware ca casserole dish. Now... If you've got some pretty ones, you are welcome to use that. And I do have a lovely set, which I did link in the description box, as well as a simple one like this. So you're going to butter your dish, or you can use shortening or some kind of grease, but I like a lot of butter in my grits. So I'm going to butter my dish. So now that I've got everything in here, we're just going to pour it into the buttered dish. Just going to pour it into the buttered dish like that. And it smells amazing. Now, like I said earlier, I didn't have the green onions that it called for. And green onions have a light oniony flavor just very light and shives are somewhat similar it's a very light fragrance and taste so that's why i decided to go with those and i have those in the backyard so now i've got that in the in the casserole dish and then we're to use the three quarter cup of cheese on top So, I've got three quarters cup of shredded cheddar. And I was thinking after I made um, the first one, this would be delicious with bacon. Like a bacon and cheddar. Because when I make shrimp and grits for my husband, usually on Valentine's Day or something like that, the bacon in the grits with the cheese is absolutely delicious. Okay. So now, as you can see, I got it all on top and I'm going to put it. I'm so busy trying to show you guys and then I'm making a mess. What I don't want is a mess. Okay. Now we're going to pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 to 45 minutes. So let me do that first and then I'll talk some more. a teeny bit there getting that in the oven and if you guys know me I do not want a mess in my oven so I'm going to wipe that up real quick I do have an oven liner at the bottom of the oven that will help me clean it up but I just uh, spilt a little bit on the door so I wanted to get take care of that so now it's in the oven. 
And I'll get this out of the way. I'll just push it up over here to the side for the time being. And then I'll get the one out of the microwave and let you see what it looks like when it comes out. Tell I'm no Rachel Ray. I'm definitely no Rachel Ray. This is what it looks like when it comes out. Look at there. All nice and cheesy. And then the other thing, when you get it out, you want to make sure that it's starting to get like brown, a golden brown around the edges. And then the cheese on the top, of course, has all melted. But it needs to be a little golden brown around the edges because that lets you know that it's starting to set. And then once you take it out, before you serve it, you have to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes so that it can set up. So now that we've done that, Let's cut a piece. Now I've cut myself a little piece there. And so when you let it set for about 10 or 15 minutes or even a little longer, then it'll firm up a little bit. And anybody that's never made grits or anything like that, you'll know that it'll do that. I've got a little bit of... There we go. Get that off the camera. Now let's give it a little taste. I'll let you see it too. This is how it looks now that I've cut into it. So you can see right there. I'll bring it closer. There's where I've cut it there. So you can see the cubes of ham there. So it's not hard, but it's firmer. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's delicious. And like I said, I didn't add any extra salt. Nanny J, what do you think? Yeah, the ham added enough salt. So I didn't need to add it. And then, of course, the cheese, the queso, all of that has salt in it. So I didn't need to add any. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is what we're having for supper tonight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Or you know me, I'll get to chatting away. And next thing you know, I'll burn it up. So now I'll have two casseroles. So I might freeze one or share one with my sister.
Okay, people, where are you? Uh, I don't see the camera. Somebody tried to call me and they knocked me off. My sound just stopped. I'm trying to get it back on, so. Sound is back on. I gotta get the camera back on. I wish you would stop trying to call me. I declined it for a reason. Okay, people, I'm trying to figure out how to get this back on. Hmm. All right. I'm going to turn you around towards me. I'm going to sit down, and we're going to try to sort this out. So let's see. So you can see me, Debbie Joe. You okay? I can't see anything. It's just pitch black. Okay, so you guys can see me. All right. Well, this is interesting. You guys can see me, but I can't see you guys. Hmm. So okay. Well, what? Well, great. I, I can't see anything, but I'll just go on. I'll take your word for it. I'll just go on because I can't figure out how to um, make the adjustment so that I can see you. All right. So now that is really delicious. It's really, really good. I wish she would stop calling. I declined it and I don't know where my phone is. Okay. Now the other thing, <laughs> Debbie Joe, I'm not dressed up. Oh, mm -hmm. I've got one. I just have on a simple red dress. You know those little red T-shirt dresses that I wear all the time, and a red apron, my red and blue plaid apron, which you guys know I love. So yeah, I'm I'm not dressed up at all. So there's that. Now, I wanted to show you guys my new planner. So if you've got yours, go and get it. And we can talk about that. So this is one of the two. Oh, I don't know where the phone is. I had it earlier. And now I don't know where I put it. Oh, Debbie Joe said this is the apron that she bought. Yeah, I, it just really dresses up. I've got on a plain old red t-shirt dress. But this apron just really dresses it up and just makes it look real special. So the planner that I'm using for this year is Kimmy's planner. And she's in her apron planner. So, and I bought the year round one. So it's, it, and you can see how thick it is. So it's got everything in there for the year. So I'm really excited about that. But the nice thing about, um, the one that I got last year when I had the um, the quarterly that went up to December and most of the planners that you guys have, it also will have this last week of um, December in it. So it goes up into uh, the 31st and then with Saturday being the first. So both of those new months will be on there. So I was able to get out my planner from that that's finishing up this year because it's the same as the page that's coming on um that's going to be coming up um for next year so i wanted to show you how i'm going to plan to use it and then if you've got yours get yours out so this is the rest of this week this is, this is the rest of this week here. And it's the 27th through the 30th. And then next week is there on the opposite page. And what? And then as you can see down here, it's got my to-dos for my Fly Lady cleaning system. Over here, I've got like a brain dump and different things like that. Oh no, this is where it tells what zone I'm in, zone five. And then the focus. And my focus for this week is my house reset. 
What about you guys? What's your focus for the week? What is your focus for the week? Mine is the house reset. So I'm going to be taking down my Christmas decor this week and probably have everything all packed up by Wednesday so that my son can come over and help my husband get everything back up into the attic. So what's you guys focus? So Nanny J says her focus is reset as well. Luann, hello, hello, hello. I was just thinking about you yesterday. I got a new phone for Christmas and I was transferring over my contacts and I came across your number. So it's good to see you. But Luann says her focus is, uh, is going to be deep cleaning the basement. So yes, so yes, hello. So yes, I'm going to be focusing on resetting the house because you know, we've been on the academic calendar, which is like the kids' school calendar where you have the two weeks off at Christmas. We've been on that calendar our entire married life because my husband taught school for years. And so he always wanted to have all the Christmas decor packed up and put away back up in the attic before he had to go back to school on that whatever Monday that was. So I'll be packing everything up this week, probably today and tomorrow. So then on Wednesday, our son, who is now also on the academic calendar that lives here in town, can come over and help him put everything back up in the attic. So Nanny Jay's calling hers Operation Clean Slate. I'm just calling my holiday reset. And then I'm also going to be working on a video to kind of help people. Like if you've been overwhelmed from the holidays, how to get back on track. That'll be for next Monday. But I wanted to show you guys how I plan on using my planner to help me do that. So I put down here that hop, that the um, house reset is my focus for the week. So Luann packed hers away yesterday. She just needs to put it away. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, mine needs to... Um, Mine needs to um, there I am. Okay, now I'm only half in. That's odd. I'm going to remove that one. Okay, there I am. There we go. So now we've got that that straightened out. All right, so let's see. So Luann's packed hers away yesterday. Well, I'm going to start on that today, but I wanted to um, kind of do a live stream. And then also, you guys, you know, I did the live stream last week and I talked about how I was trying not to be depressed. And I wasn't. I was able to get through the Christmas day, the Christmas holiday, and I did just fine. I wasn't weepy or teary. I wasn't depressed at all. I did just fine. And we did a live stream like that morning, well, virtual. We connected with my daughter and her family that morning virtually because they were the ones that were supposed to be here. So we opened our gifts together on uh, FaceTime. And then my son and his family that live in Georgia, they joined us on uh, FaceTime a couple of hours later. And then my son that lives here, he, him and his family came over for dinner. So I wasn't sad at all. Ronnie's and hers is already taken down, packed up, and put away. You know, Ronnie, yesterday I was just so tired from all of the different things that I'd been doing to kind of get ready for the holiday that I just pretty much stayed in pajamas all day. My husband was like, you still got your pajamas on? He was totally shocked, but he was glad that I did because I'm usually like, go, 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 like the Energ Energizer Bunny. This time, I actually sat down and rested. So now let's talk about planners for a little bit. And yes, I wasn't sad. It is challenging times. And you know, um, Luann, it's like we have to adapt to the new normal. That's what it is. And you know, my guest that's going to be on the show on Thursday, she's going to be talking about the loss of a spouse. Now, that is not the most pleasant topic to talk about. Who wants to have to go through that? But that is the reality of life. And you can either lose a spouse through divorce or through death. 
and she's going to talk about that. And for her, there is a new normal. So we all have to adjust to this new normal that our world is right now as we try to live through this pandemic. So Luann said she wore pajamas all day while she packed up her Christmas. Debbie Joe, why did you have to cook again yesterday? Yesterday was Sunday. You should have plenty of leftovers from Christmas Day. We had, um, I made a turkey for Christmas dinner because we always have a turkey, Thanksgiving and Christmas. I always make a turkey. So we had a turkey for Christmas dinner, but you guys will laugh at this. We had some ham left over from Thanksgiving dinner. And I thought, I'm going to put this in the freezer. Well, as it turned out, we weren't going to have as many people here for dinner as I had anticipated. I had bought a new ham to make. So I thought, you know what? I'll just get that ham out that was left over from Thanksgiving. That'll be enough because we were only going to be like six or seven people. So I thought that'll be enough. So I was talking to my little granddaughters that live in Georgia. My one named Morgan. You guys have probably heard Morgan before. And I said, well, I'm going to pull out the ham from Thanksgiving. And Morgan's like, Grandma, that was four weeks ago. I said, it was in the freezer. It's not as if it was in the refrigerator for four weeks. But she was like, oh, my goodness, that ham's been in there too long. So, yeah, that was funny. So, Debbie Joe, tell us, what did you cook yesterday that you had to cook again? That's what I'm curious about. Ronnie says she didn't have a house full of family. We had a house that was just a little bit full. I can't say it was full, but we had family over and it was nice. And I, like I said, I worked at it when I could feel the sadness trying to creep in. I was like, I'm not doing that today. I am not doing that today. This is our new normal and we're going to make it an adjustment. Oh, Debbie Jill said a last minute get together with their oldest son. They were supposed to meet at a restaurant. But all, all because of the coronaviruses were so high that they just threw together a lasagna. Let Debbie Joe, I get it. That was, as you know, that was why my daughter and her family didn't get here. They went to get tested um, the day before they were to get in the car to drive up. And one of the kids had COVID, so they couldn't come. So, and then my son who lives in Georgia, um, they were here for Thanksgiving, but they and they weren't due to come for Christmas. Well, he has COVID because they were together at some school events with his daughters. And um, so a lot of the people that came to the school event, the school called and said, you might get yourself tested because quite a few people who came to this event now have COVID. So he got himself tested and he has COVID and he's got both his vaccines and the booster. So, but he wasn't super, super sick though. So that's good. And my granddaughter's doing much better. She's not super sick either. So that's nice to know. So what planners are you guys going to use? Tell me that. What planner are you going to use? Because I am determined that I am going to stay on track. I'm going to go through and I want to get rid of at least 50% of the stuff in this house. And my husband is in agreement. We've just got too much stuff. And so we're working on the Swedish death cleaning. And I thought at least 50% of the stuff I want to part with. So after January, after the first week of January, one of the things I'm, well, it might be, well, I'm at when January, sometime during January, I'm going to start on that. And I'm going to start in the kitchen because I've heard some things here in the kitchen before. I've still got way too much. I've got one pantry that is just not working. So I'm going to work on that. So Luann says she's using a blue sky planner for the first time. She'll see if she likes it. Tell us about the blue sky planner. Is it a daily? Is it a weekly? Is it a monthly? Like, how does it work? Tell us about that. So I decided that I was going to go with the, um, she's in her apron planner for my daily and catch all planner because it's got all the stuff on it that I need for my fly lady cleaning system. It's got places for the zones. It's got to-do lists. And the other thing it's got is a place that I can do an inventory on my fridge and my freezer and that kind of thing. So I think it's going to help me keep everything together in regards to all of the aspects of my life. And it's got some extra pages and boxes that I can use um, to put some business things in. 
But I do have a day designer that I'm going to use as a business planner, like for Apron Diva and for my YouTube stuff. So I've got a different planner for that. Luann says she's working on a whole house purge and she's about halfway there. What rooms did you start in, Leanne? So now Danita M is going to use the plum paper. She was able to personalize it. It's a bit pricey, but she got a good deal on Black Friday. I got the day designer and I got that day designer months ago. So trust me, I did not get a good deal on it, but I wanted to try it. And it's an hourly and I want to try some time blocking when it comes to uh, things for the business. So we're going to see how that works. But my sister Mickey loves plum paper. She's talked about it before. So that's kind of cool. So Debbie Joe, which planner did you get? I know you were, we had talked about this on the show the other day. Which planner did you get? Also, Luann has a plum paper and it's a weekly all on one page. Not sure of the paper quality, but it's good enough. So she'll see. You know what? And that's the thing. You're trying something new. So don't spend a lot of money on a planner if you, system. If you're not sure if it's going to work for you. I'm pretty sure this is going to work for me. So I didn't mind spending the money on it. Yeah, it's good enough. So give it a try. I've been following this new uh, person that I found. Her name is Elena. And she's called the Organized Money. And she is amazing. She talks about how to use your planner, how to plan in your planner, how to make sure you don't fall off track. She's just amazing. So if, uh, I'm going to type her in. She's called the Organized Money. Yeah, she's called Organized Money, and uh, she really shows you how to use your planner, how to set it up, how to use it for, if it's for homekeeping, if it's for business, just so many different ways. So I'm really going to follow her closely throughout the next year. I love her. I would love to get her on the show on Thursday. Don't know if I'm able to do it or not, but I'm going to give it a try. And you guys had asked if I could get Sophia from uh, My Great Challenge on the show. I reached out to her and requested her appearance. Haven't heard back from her yet, though. Let's see. Mrs. C says the thumbs up. Please give me a thumbs up. I, that helps me out so much. So I'd appreciate that. So Ronnie has a small mead brand planner, calendar and planner in one. She needs something small. If she purchases a larger one, it'll be too overwhelming. And I get that too. Um, I got a really big inkwell press. The inkwell press big, just to give it a try, just to see what it was like. And I think was like, oh, this thing is huge. And it was so big, it was overwhelming. This one is a little bigger than the classic planner, which I typically use. But I got the opportunity to try it out last year when I got the quarterly and I found that it worked out for me. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to be taking it out of the house. It's going to be living here on like on the desk or downstairs in the kitchen on the table because it's just too big to take it out of the house. I've got a smaller planner that if I need to take something out of the house, I can do that with. All right. So Danita has a daily planner, including Saturday and Sunday as separate days. Oh, because she has a lot to do on the weekends. It also has goal sheets, monthly zone cleaning, meal planning, and habit checklist. Exactly. That's why I like this one, Danita, because it's got... Oh, guys, excuse me for being so indelicate for snorting. I like this. Um, she's in her apron planner because... It allows you to, um, I'm going to take you off for a second. It allows you to put the habits in that you want. So I'm listing down like my um, yoga and home physical therapy, daily clutter stops, laundry, uh, prayer and devotion, paper clutter. And I've not been working on my paper clutter as much as I should and then also I need to work on my community tab every day. And this is in the morning. And then in the evening, my after dinner routine, my self-care routine, prayer, 
getting my clothing out the night before, as well as checking my planner every night. Now, those are the habits that I want to track. And so it gives me a place that I can track them right here on this planner. And then I can also got a place over here where I can put, like I said, the focus for the week and I can put more than one thing there. And then the zone that I'm working in, that kind of thing. And then on the other facing page, you've got your uh, expenses. So you can see if you've like spent any money over there. Monthly expenses that you've spent. And then over here, you've got a brain dump. And I like that. So it's it's a to-do list or brain dump. And it's for the whole week. So you can just kind of mark things out as you go. Because some things you don't have to do that day. But one of the things that I did do when I was setting this up, like I put over here, this is my one from where I'm finishing up from last year. I put over here that I need to order plane tickets and I need to order those today. So I put a star by them so that I would order them. But then also I put them here on the list of things like this is where I will often assign times or specific things in here. And so one of the things that I want to do is be sure and order plane tickets. So I put it on there so that I wouldn't forget it. Hey, praying couple cooking series. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I like Kimmy's layout too, Nanny. So that's why I decided that I was going to go ahead and do that. So now, Debbie Joe, you say you follow um, Organized Money. You follow her too. She's amazing if that's who you're saying you, you uh, follow too. Uh, Debbie Joe has an Erin Condren, two different planners, and an Organized 365. Okay. I ain't mad at you. I got three planners myself, but I've got one that I'm definitely going to use. Like this one that she's in her apron is going to be the one that I use every day. I got the one for my business that I'm going to also take a look at every day. And I'll put a note on this one to refer to that one so I don't forget to look at it. Like I'm scheduling time in here to check my planner. And then I've got one for projects that I might work on, but it was something pretty inexpensive. Miss Congeniality has a daily, uh, has a daily that's an uncertain brand. So is it a dated brand? Do you have to date it yourself? That kind of thing. Just curious. Luann says she's decluttered the main floor this fall, now the basement, then the upstairs in the garage. We decluttered the garage in the fall, but then as we worked on stuff in the house, we ended up putting more stuff out there because like I would give him boxes to take to the Goodwill. And then later on, I discovered the boxes are still out in the garage. So for whatever reason, they didn't get there. So we're going to work on that. And as we... Um, take down Christmas decor, I'm going to see like, okay, so what things do we need to uh, donate? So we'll look at that. Nancy bought an 18 month happy planner in June and she wants the she's in her apron. So now Nancy, you can do a couple different ways with the she's in her apron. You can buy like the one that's in a whole year, like this one and that the whole year is in there and it's got some really nice perks as part of it. Or you can get what they call the quarterly. And it's like four, it, there's three sets with four months each in it. So it's probably really like a trilogy, but we're so used to calling planners quarterly, but you could get the trilogy and get, get it that way. And then it's not so heavy and you're opening up a new planner each quarter. So that's a thought there, um, or each trimester, I should say. So, so you could look at it that way. And she's got them available for you to order now. And I'm not sponsored by Kimmy I, or anything like that. I just um, like this one. And I'm just sharing with you guys things that I like. Um, and Praying Couple is in Georgia cooking series. Hey, I'm glad you joined us. I hope you had the opportunity to see me cook my cheese and grits. Oh, yeah, Danita, I don't think she told us what her planner was. Let me look back to see. She just said it's a daily planner, including Saturdays and Sundays and separate days. So, Danita, what is your planner? Yeah, you didn't tell us that. Jordan T is on. Hey, Jordan, glad you joined us. And I like her. That's Elena at Organized Money. You guys, 
if you want to find someone to help you figure out what to do with your planner, Elena at Organized Money is the one. She is amazing. So Miss C has a dated monthly and has a travel expense record for each month. Also place for telephone numbers and notes. I like that. There's no place for telephone numbers in any of these planners that I've got. So that is something to think about. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, oh, Danita has the plum paper. That's what hers is, um, Luann, the plum paper. She has the plum paper. And I know Mickey Blue Skies used to talk about the plum paper uh, company before, and she really liked it too. So, but then she's a planner, babe. She has so many different ones she likes to look. And even if she doesn't buy them, she explores them. She investigates them. So she's really pretty knowledgeable about a lot of different planners. So that's why I have learned about some of them from them. So now I'm not divorced from Inkwell Press. I did buy one, but the smaller personal size one that I bought, I gave to one of my younger sisters because she would always say, you and Mickey have those fancy planners and I don't have one. So I gave her the smaller Inkwell Press that I've got. And then I'm going to use my a classic size for my gold planner for this year. So Danita says, um, so many choices on how to personalize it. It can be a bit overwhelming at first, but she's on her third planner and love the options. Exactly. I used Kimmy's planner in the fall and I really liked it. And so I decided to go with it. And I've used that kind of thing enough to know whether or not I'm going to like it. I did have the... Um, Oh, what was that? The other one. Mm. Ivory Paper Company last year. And I'm still in it because it's my business planner. And whereas I liked it, there were a few things that were missing for me in regards to some new uh, threads in my life that I wanted to, to keep track of. So, hey, Wendy, always busy. Girl, I haven't seen you in forever. Hello and how are you? It is so nice of you to join us. I've already cooked my... Uh, cheese and grits casserole. It's in the oven. And so we're waiting for that to come out. And so while we're waiting for it to come out, we're talking about the planners we're going to use for 2022. So what planner do you have, Wendy? What are you going to do to keep yourself organized? Because you are always busy and you probably need something to help you stay organized. The other question, ladies and gents, what is your word for the year? One of the things that me and Mickey Blue Sky started doing about five or six years ago, and um, that was to establish a word. And she used to be involved, like with, was it Debbie? No, Allie, Allie Edwards, Allie Edwards. She used to be involved with the Allie Edwards Society and different things like that. And so one of the things that we always did through Allie Edwards was to choose a word for the year. And then when I became a part of the Inkwell Press family, we had to choose a word for the year that would kind of help us to, that would guide us through the year. And we would put that as our mission for the year. And so last year, my word was innovative. And that's when I started the apron business. This year, my word is strategic. I want to be strategic in all the things that I do in my personal life, in my uh, professional life, in my business, with YouTube, with Apron Diva. So strategic is my word for the year. What are your words? And I saw that, um, so Debbie Jo says she'll probably get order Kimmy's next year. And I'm doing a no spend January. I'll talk about that again in a minute. And if I forget it, somebody remind me. But yes, my word for the year is strategic. And I was listening to... Uh, a video that was on and it was uh, one by Oprah Winfrey and it was do this every day and it'll change your life. And I listened to it. It was about a 15 minute video and it was so nice. If I can go back and find it, I'll link it in the description box, but it was really amazing. But one of the things she talked about was forgiveness and then I thought, well, maybe I should choose forgiveness as my word for the year. Then I'm like, no, I'm going to keep strategic as my word for the year 
but I'm going to be strategic about focusing on forgiveness because she talked about just how important forgiveness was and I'll link it in the description box. It was amazing. But Wendy got, oh my goodness, Wendy got a new Philofax planner for Christmas. Nikki Blue Skies loves Philofax. And then I was talking to Leona Dewey at Ebony Ivy and Time in the Kitchen. And I think she likes Philofaxes too. She does the B6 Stology or something like that. And sometimes you can use Philofax covers for those. So, okay. Nanny J. Peace. I love that. Don't we all want peace in our lives? Oh my goodness. I love that too. So I can make strategic work for that too, because one of the things that I've been really trying to work at is being a better wife and mother and just creating more harmony. And so I'm going to be strategic about trying to make sure that I continue to create more peace and harmony. So I love that, Nanny Jo. Peace. Wendy, intentional. And Wendy, with you being always busy, you need that, being intentional. And that's why I pick strategic, too, because, well, you guys know me. I can get a little scattered. Sometimes I'm like a squirrel. So that's why I pick strategic, so that I would be more strategic about the things that I do. And I'm thinking intentional is very similar to that. You're going to be intentional about life. And that, that means that covers everything. Personal relationships, work, home, school, kids, family. Oh, Nikki A, patience. I, I like that. And we could all stand to cultivate more patience. And I have been more patient lately. Now, you know, one of the most patient people I know is my husband. Now, he's a retired art teacher. He taught middle school art for like 36 years. And that's the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade year. And, you know, when they come in the middle school at sixth grade, they're still real kind of wild and healthy skelter and all hug eating, all that kind of stuff. And by the time they get to the eighth grade, you think they're all cool. But it's noisy. I would go to visit him sometimes and I would think, oh my gosh, how can you stand all this noise? But he is so patient. He used to teach driver's ed as well. And that shows you how patient he is. He taught driver's ed for years and was teaching one of our grand nephews how to drive most recently. But I'm not as patient. I've got a little bit more of a quick trigger and I've been working at that. So I like that, Nikki, patience. Oh, Luann, tell us about your word. Tell us about growth and what that means for you. Now, as I look at your word, I'm going to go back and write all these words down. And Mickey Blue Skies, and I'm not sure what she's doing, but I wish she was on today so she could see all of this. But tell us about growth, Luann. For me, when I look at growth, for me, I want to be more intentional and strategic about my apron diva business. And one of the things I want to try to do is grow 250 new customers to Apron Diva for 2022. Now, I realize that's a huge, big, scary goal, as Amy Porterfield said, but I'm just putting it out there because I want to attract new people so that I can help other women learn how nice it is to wear aprons in their home when they're cooking, cleaning, and that kind of thing. So tell us what growth means for you. Debbie Jo, I love that. Wow, trust. I like that. And I am pretty good at trusting. Every now and then I might get in a little, you know, anxious mood. But for the most part, I'm I'm good at trust, probably too trusting. Um, so Debbie Joe said she's doing a no spin January too. You know, when Kate Caden was on, she talked about that. And I thought I could use a no spin January because I've been spending a lot of money as I got ready for Christmas. Oh, wait, there's a. OK, so now looks like we got a um, there. So trust. Let me go turn you guys around while I go get this out of the oven. Hopefully I can get this out of the oven. Let's see. Yes, you guys can see. OK. Oh my, it looks great. Hmm. 
it's still pretty jiggly. Oh, I'm, I'm going to give it five more minutes. Okay, I'm going to give it five more minutes and then I'll get it out. But okay, so now let's talk about the no spin January. So Kate King from the K Squad, she, her channel is called Making Frugal Living Fun. And she talked about the importance of being thrifty and frugal and all that kind of stuff. And she's doing a no spin January. So if you guys have not visited her channel, do take a look at it so that you can see the plans that she's talking about to kind of help you guys think about a no spend January. I'll try to remember to put something on the community tab about that too, but we've been spending quite a bit lately. Well, you know, to get ready for Christmas, you spend a lot buying gifts and different things like that. And then there's been a couple unexpected expenses that have come up. And so we've chipped in on some things like that. So I really need to scale back for January. And then there's some things I want to do next year. So I want to try to save up for those. So, so yeah. So now Danita's word is strength. And I like that too, Janita. Strength. Tell us some, you guys tell us a little bit about your words and why you picked some of the ones you did. And then Nancy picked joy. I had joy for my year, for my word one year. And I still got my vision board where I had put joy on there. But yeah, I love joy because we all need to have joy in our life. Okay, so Miss C says instead of a word per se, she'll utilize a Bible scripture. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Okay. So that makes sense, too. I, I think um, I like the idea of choosing a Bible verse and having it kind of guide you throughout the year, too. One of the things that I'm trying to do, as you guys saw on my um, habit tracker, on my um, choosing a apron planner, is that I'm trying to make sure that I do a daily prayer and devotion in the morning and then prayer in the evening. And for the devotion, my, Mickey Blue Skies gave me this book at least 10 years ago. It was a woman's daily devotional, and it's got these little stories in it that that are spring from a Bible verse, and then you can write stuff about it. And I was like, why don't you give me this thing? She know I'm not going to do anything with it. And I put it on the shelf, on the bookshelf. Well, last, well, this year, about three or four months ago, I was thinking, I really need to pray more and, and to be more de devoted. So I got that down and started working through it. So it was like, she knew that when the time was right, I would get it out and I would use it. And so I'm trying to put it on my list to do one of those daily devotional journals every day. And I also was looking for somewhere to write my gratitude. And that's the one thing here in the She's in Her Apron Planner that I don't have a place for that now, there's a place on the side for meal planning, which I could write it there, or there's some notes section at the um, back of each month. And I guess I could do a gratitude journal there. But in my business planner, there is a place in there for gratitude. So there's that. So yeah, we'll see. No spend January sounds like a great idea. And I don't know. And you get to decide the rules for no spend too. Like you can say no spending on eating out or no spending on... Um, like no Starbucks for the month or whatever. You, you get to decide how to do that. The other thing that I always do in January is Lisa Sutton at Sutton's Days, and she's going to be on our show next Thursday on January 6th. She always does a pantry challenge every January. That's how I first got into my pantry stuff, by being exposed to Lisa, because she's just so knowledgeable and she does that. And so it includes doing an inventory of your planner, I mean, of your pantry, of your freezer, your fridge, taking an assessment of everything that you have, looking at what you need to do to use up your things or to if you've got any gaps, that kind of thing. So I'm also going to be working on that. And so I'll let you guys know a little bit about that as well. 
Nanny J says she needs a nose band. I'm going to have to because, well, you know, my um, granddaughter just got admitted to the college of her dreams. And uh, so I was talking to her mom about that earlier. And, you know, when they get admitted to some of these elite colleges, it is quite pricey. So I thought, well, we'll try to see what we can set aside to kind of help them just a little bit, too. Uh, Luann, let me get that out of the oven. Then I'll come back over and we'll look at your... Um, Yeah. Oh, let me get them. I'll get this off first so that I wonder why that won't come off the screen. There, okay. If you guys are joining me for the first time, you're probably thinking, what is this woman doing? Oh my, yeah, those five extra minutes made a big difference. Oh yeah. Smell amazing. So I have to call Blue Skies to see if she wants some of this too. This is it. Look at that. See that? Here it bubble. So it looks really good. I got a new little thingy to hold my iPad when I'm um, doing live streams and it is so nice, but I'm still adjusting to everything. Okay, so it looks really good. This one, this dish that I used this time was a, just a teeny bit smaller than the first dish that I used. So it took a little bit longer to cook as well as um, it also um, was a little bit thicker, but you can see how nicely it's browned all around the edges. It looks amazing. So there's that. All right, let me find the way in again now. So, okay. So the wind said her word is about trying new things without fear expanding knowledge in lots of areas and growing things. I would love to grow flowers as a business. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? When I said that I would like to start an apron business, it was just like a pipe dream. And then I was talking to um, a friend and she says, well, you can do that. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to, you know, do this or that or and she said, just walk it backwards. Think about what are the things you need to do and, you know, start with the end in mind and then just kind of walk it back as far as the different kinds of things that you think you would need to do. And we just created a timeline. And so, but the first thing is, Luann, is to explore what kind of flowers to grow, where to grow, what sells in your area, where you would get your flowers from. And when you say grow flowers as a business, how do you plan to make it a business? Where do you plan to sell them? Who do you plan to sell them to? So it's doable. And I think you've got a pretty big uh, yard where you live. So it, it just might work. So don't say never start. The first thing you start with is that dream that you want to grow flowers as a business. That's the dream. And then you start breaking it down into steps to try to make the dream come true to see what you can do to get there. I like that idea. Ha! Luann says no spend January and maybe February too. You know, my husband is all for that. He's been like, look, have you checked the budget lately? And I'm like, no, that's for you to do. And you guys are probably laughing, but I always managed the budget when we were young and married with kids and all that stuff. I managed the budget, paid the bills. You know, he brought the money home, put it in the bank, but I had to manage it all. 
And one day I got sick and I could not do it. I didn't know the man could write a check. And I was unable to do it for months. And so he had to take it all over. He does a beautiful job. He, he had everything just about automated. And it's like, so I'm even bothered anymore. I feel like you're doing it. I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, so Danita's word was strength, but not just physical strength, but more mental and emotional strength. I like that, too. I like that. Kathleen, hello. It's been a while, I think, since you've joined us. And this live stream started out. I was cooking my casserole, and I'll show it to you and get in a minute. It turned, I just took it out of the oven, and it looks wonderful. But right now, we're talking about our words of the year, what word we have chosen to help guide us through the year. My word is strategic. I want to be strategic in my personal life, my professional life, my business life. In all aspects, I want to try to be strategic, including being strategic about forgiveness and those kinds of things. And then other people are sharing their words. And so Danita's word was strength and she wants to be more uh, stronger mentally and emotionally. And I like that idea too, Danita. I'm working at getting my knee rehabilitated. And I like the idea of emotional and mental strength. Um, so there's Denise's word, strength. And Debbie Joe's word is trust. Luann's word is growth. And Nikki's word is patience. Wendy's word is intentional. Nanny J's word is peace. And there's my word, strategic. So and Miss C said that instead of choosing a word, she's using a Bible scripture. And she's given us the, the link, or not the link, but the citation for uh, the version is the Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, verse 2 from the King James Version. And so you can see what her guiding principle or verse is going to be. So so uh, Kathleen, what's going to be your word? So Kathleen says every year the Jehovah Witnesses have a year's tax. And so for 2021, this was it. So what's going to be your word, your, your text for 2022? That'd be interesting to know. So what's your text for 2022? And then um, we're also talking about a no spin January. Guys, I had not intended to be on here this long. And here we are. But I'm so enjoying chatting with you guys. So we talked about the pantries also and having a pantry challenge. And I invite you guys to check out Lisa Sutton's channel and her pantry challenge for 2022. Because I think some of the basic things she talks about are just so important for us as homemakers which is why I really kind of got involved in starting the that because as homemakers, there's just things that we just need to know how to do. So, yes. Yeah, so Nanny's word for peace is peace in times of turmoil and create peace in her home. Oh, God, don't this world need peace? It's in such turmoil right now. So, yes, peace in your home. So I like that. And Nanny, Nancy had chosen the word joy and she's looking at finding joy in the little things of life. And yes, and that gratitude flows right into that. Like being grateful for those things, like being able to breathe, being able to walk. When I go to physical therapy and I've been having some trouble with my knee, but then I look at some of the other people that are there and I'm thinking, okay, you're not doing too bad. Or just being grateful for the fact that I've got a house over my head and I was able to make a dish for dinner and not have to worry about where tomorrow's meal is going to come from. So just trying to learn to do that. So Debbie Jo pulled from her pantry for most of December and it was helpful to lead her into a no spin January. And yeah, I'm looking at pulling from my pantry for January too. And with the pantry challenge, you get to decide how it goes too. Now one year, I think uh, Lisa said that her, she challenged herself not to buy any food for the month of January and to completely live off her pantry, which meant either food that she canned or frozen or whatever. I think when I did it the first year or last year, I chose that I would use the staples and dry goods, but that I would allow myself to buy fresh produce. You get to decide how you want to do it. So it's just kind of fun. 
And let's see. Uh, willy nilly. This is more than willy nilly for this word for this year. I tell you what. So Debbie Joe, I agree. She said she started to notice becoming more stressed and fearful around the coronavirus and being quarantined at home all the time. So she picked trust to remind her to trust in the Lord for his will for my life. Yes, I agree. I agree completely, Debbie Joe. It's like we have to trust more in God and that step out on his beliefs, but also in that regard, do the things we need to do to try to keep ourselves safe. So my husband and I have been talking about it. And like I said, we had a very small Christmas uh, celebration as far as people coming into the house. And we had gotten a little lax about not wearing our mask um, sometimes, but we decided we're gonna have to really make sure that as far as trusting in, in the Lord, but also doing the things that we need to do to help ourselves. So making sure we wear a mask when we go out. And then today I had to go to the bank. And when I left the bank, I thought about all the things I touched when I was in the bank because I left my pen at home. Didn't have a, I dug through my purse, couldn't find a single pen. So I had to use the pen on the counter. And I thought, how many hands have touched this pen? So when I got in the car, I used uh, some hand sanitizer. Then I left there and I stopped at the gas station. And then I thought, how many people have touched this? So, of course, we can't completely sanitize ourselves from everything. I mean, we're not like, who's a, the, the rich guy that was kind of nutsy about germs? But anyway, there's only so much we can do. But there are some things we can do, such as when we do go out, wear a mask. And then when we do come home, wash our hands and use hand sanitizer in your car. When your kids go out, um, have if they're over the age of three, you can have them wear a mask and make sure you're using sanitizer on their hands or at least washing their hands when they come home, that kind of thing. So we just have to do the things we need to do. So for 2022, Okay, so there's your verse for 2022. So good. So now we know how Kathleen's going to be, her year is going to be focused around seeking Jehovah so that everything works out well in their life. Nasty Haven, how are you? I haven't seen you for a while. It's good to have you join us. I like the idea of choosing a Bible scripture too. That's, that's really a great idea. Danita said she loves all the words, and I do too. I, I really do too. I love all the words. I love the idea of the Bible scriptures. That is so good. So Ronnie thinks her word might be peace. You can't go wrong with peace. You can't go wrong with peace. Even if you think about like if I was thinking about peace, let, let's say, for example, if I chose the word peace and I wanted peace in my home, which I do. And I've got a set of wind chimes on the porch that is called Peaceful Harmony. And when I bought them, we were kind of having some struggles at the time. So I bought them and my husband loves wind chimes. So I was get the wind chimes for him. But of course, they also work for me, too. And this one was called Peaceful Harmony. And I thought this wind chime is going to ring peace into our home. So you can think about it from that perspective. And then if I was looking at my business, I want to have peace in the apron diva business. So if I'm going to have peace in the business, then I've got to do the steps that I need to do to make sure things are peaceful, paying attention and, um, you know, ordering the right things and keeping track of the money, right? And all that kind of stuff gives you peace. Hey, Cal, my sister from another mister. It is so good to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, you got plenty of space to grow. Oh. Okay, so you're working on the plan. So good, good. Get it started. You know what, Cal? It's okay. You can catch the replay. We've been talking about our... I've already cooked my dish and now we're talking about the words we're choosing for the year to kind of help guide us. My word is strategic. So what's your word? Oh, you really enjoyed the graphic when I was holding the gift. Okay, well, thank you. I'm going to try. And you know, I love doing these live streams. I didn't mean to stay on as long as I'm on today, but I just kind of like sitting down and chatting with you guys and just kind of talking about different things. And I think part of it with us being just more 
I don't want to say fearful, but more cautious about going out as the virus continues to surge. It's helped me to stay connected with other people. Howard Hughes. Yes, that's who that was, Nanny J. Well, look at the other one. Didn't it, doesn't it look amazing? Yeah. Well, I had to make one on live stream. I was like, you make two of those? Oh, <laughs> Kathleen said mine. Yeah, he was kind of weird about that, too. Yeah, shop early. That makes so much sense, uh, Ronnie, too. Always wear your mask and shop early. I'm sorry you lost your dad to COVID. Yeah, I, I know so many people that have lost family members to COVID, so it's it's no joke. Oh, Debbie Joe said she's lost several close friends. Oh, I'm sorry, Debbie. Lindsay Lou, hi there. And you said you haven't thought about 2022. You should probably think about it. Yeah, I mean, it'll be here in what? Today is the 28th? No, 27? Five days. It'll be 2022. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate it. Okay. No, I, I don't have anything. Blue skies. Hey, blue skies. I was going to call you. Guys, this is who was kept calling me, knocking us offline while we were um, while while we were talking and while I was doing the cooking, and I couldn't find the phone, so I couldn't call her to let her know I was doing a live stream. So, but yes, come on over for dinner. I'll have to show you this in just a minute. Okay, so now let me turn the uh, when well, I'm using that new thing that I got for Christmas, but let me turn it around now. Let me get that off. So here's the casserole, the cheese casserole that I made. And see, now you notice it's been sitting about 10 minutes. So you see now it's not near as jiggly. Look at that. So yes, blue skies do come over. I just love cooked cheese. So yes, blue skies, do come over for dinner. We got plenty. We have two of those casserole dishes. I showed my husband the other one. He was like, you made two of those? But I'm going to start doing like Rachel Ray does when it's practical. So I made the one ahead to try it out. And then I wanted to have one that I could pull out and show you what it looked like. I had no idea we'd still be on when it came out of the oven. And here we are. So yeah, Blue Sky says she's coming for, over for dinner and she says she didn't know that I was on live. Yeah, I was on live and I don't know where the phone is so I couldn't call you to let you know that I was on live. So Kathleen's in Seattle, Washington. Had snow yesterday. It's 20 degrees tomorrow. Wow. What, what did we have today, Will? 46? It's about 40 degrees here. No snow. It's been all rainy and overcast. It's very warm for this time of the year. We expect snow tomorrow, though. Cal, I got the link to the recipe in the description box. I use leftover Christmas ham, and that was the whole start of this. I wanted to use some leftover Christmas ham and then also use some things for my prep, and the Velveeta cheese was in my prep list. So there's that. So blue skies, people are talking to you. Yeah, she was probably wondering why I wasn't answering the phone. She says she's getting ready to shut the house up and she'll be right over. Come on over. <laughs> so Blue Sky said she was wondering why I didn't answer. So she hopped on YouTube and here I am. Yeah, that's where I am. Yeah, come on over. Very cold for Seattle. Everywhere else gets colder. Yeah, this is warm for us today. It's pretty warm for us. So there's that. Well, listen, guys, I do not want to keep you guys on forever, but I do want to thank you guys for joining me. This has been so much fun. And, you know, I needed the live stream. I needed to be able to just sit and just chat and talk to you guys. So I'm thinking maybe when I start my membership, that's one of the things I'll do. Maybe we'll do a live stream uh, once a month that's just for the membership. And then I can answer questions or something like that. I don't know.
Debbie Joe. Mickey Blue Sky says, after three tries, she's finally finished your gift. She's going to be shipped tomorrow. Debbie Joe, there was nothing wrong. Well, the one, there was an obvious defect in it. But the other two, there was nothing wrong with them. She was just being a perfectionist. They had to be perfect. I'm like, those are fine. I couldn't find anything wrong with two of them. But she says, no, they're not right. So, all right. Yeah, you know, Blue Skies, you missed it, but Ronnie Weaver said she lost her dad to COVID. So she's just really been kind of getting through things. And um, I don't know, it's just been tough, though, for everybody. Danita, you guys are stuck. She lives in Seattle and says, we're stuck. Good thing my fridge and pantry are stuck. Well, I guess you guys got lots of snow. You probably get it earlier than we do. So Nikki says she's in Seattle area also, and she's about to leave for work. That's one of the reasons why she needs patience. What do you do, uh, Nikki? Tell us what you do. But yeah, if you live in an area that you get lots of snow, which we do too, we just haven't got any yet. So, but anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Of course, I'm going to still be here for non-members. I don't even have any members yet. I haven't started it. Me and Blue Skies are, we will be making the plans and that kind of thing. But of course, because you guys are my home base. You guys are the foundation. You guys are what got me to where I'm at right now. So of course, I'm going to be right here for you guys. And one of the things I'm trying to think about doing is more live cooking. A couple of you guys said you liked it when I cooked live. But I have to figure out how I can do it and it makes sense. Like I'm not Rachel Ray. I don't have like a big kitchen crew and all of that. And my husband says I end up using every dish in the house when I'm cooking. So I'm trying to be more neat when I'm cooking on screen. It's one thing if I'm doing a video, because once if I'm doing a video, I can pause the camera and I can run over there and clean everything up, put everything away, then get out the next set of stuff. But when you're cooking live, you can't do that. So I'm trying to figure out how to be neater and to figure out, well, what kind of things can I cook that, and also I want to make sure that I'm ministering to my young homemakers so that I can kind of teach them some things. Like this will be a good dish to feed to your family. It'd be a good one to make like for, for in the morning, breakfast casserole for holiday time or just even through the week. Just have it made the night before. You could serve it to them for breakfast that next morning, that kind of thing. Debbie Joe, I'm going to be right here for you. So don't you even think about it. Oh, cleaning tool. Yeah, this has just been fun. Hey, Khadija, my little sister. It is so good to see you here today, too. I um, am really trying to wrap this up. We have been just chatting. We've had such a nice time. I made a beautiful ham and cheese casserole. And uh, I told my husband I, when, he, when I started working on it, I said, well, this will be for your breakfast. He said... We can't have it for supper. I'm like, well, it's grits. He said, you can eat grits at any time. I'm like, well, you know what? You're right. You can have grits for breakfast, brunch, or dinner. So we're having this uh, ham, cheese, and grits for dinner tonight. <laughs> Debbie Jo said, I don't need to make sense. I just like watching you. It's like she's in the kitchen with a friend. And you know, Debbie Jo, that's what I want people to feel. I want you to feel like you're just sitting right here, like Mickey Blue Skies. She lives five minutes away from me, so she can be here in a minute. So I want you to feel like you're just sitting here and we're just chatting. And it's really been helpful for me because as much as I love my husband, I like to chat and he's fairly quiet. And so sometimes I'll just be chattering away and he's just waiting for me to stop talking so he can get back to his fly making or whatever it is he's doing. But he's pretty patient about listening. But sometimes I like to talk about lady kind of stuff. You know, ladies like to talk about cooking and planners and cleaning. And, you know, he'll listen, but that doesn't really turn him on. So it's fun to talk to you guys about this stuff. Oh, yeah, she's talking to Khadija. Oh, you mean you want me to ask Tyra from from Living on a Dime to Grow Witch to be on the show? Oh, 
I'll put her name down. Blue Skies, put her name down. Kathleen is suggesting Tara from uh, Living on a Dime to Grow Rich. So we can ask her. People don't always, um, some people just don't bother to respond back. Because, I mean, I'm not a huge YouTuber. So some people don't bother to respond back. Some people are busy. Um, but the people that have responded back have been pretty good. We've got a good lineup for January, too. So, so yeah. Good, Cal. She says she's sitting at my table waiting on a plate. That's fine. Yeah, I think I'll get out some um, biscuits to go with this uh, and some kind of vegetable to go with this. All right. Well, it has been nice chatting and talking with you guys today. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, do join us on Thursday when I, my, I have my friend Sylvia Page on and we're going to talk about loss of a spouse and uh, some things that people need to do or be aware of because there's things that you probably just hadn't thought about. So be sure to join us uh, to circle back to that. Oh, and I was supposed to show the casserole again to the people that joined us late. So let me do that. So here is the casserole for the people that joined us late. It's a cheese and grits casserole. And see, it's been sitting here for about and this is what it looks like when you cut into it like that. How do you want to love it? <laughs> Little ones didn't want to lay down. I get it. Well, uh, catch the replay, Khadija. The, oh, the other thing, Khadija, we talked about our words for the year. So what is a word that can help you guide yourself for the year? Now, Kathleen says she's using a Bible verse, and I think it was Miss C also. They both have Bible verses that are going to guide them through the year. But we've had other words that people have chosen um, I chose strategic and I told, I chose strategic. Nanny J chose peace. Wendy chose intentional. Nikki chose patience. Luann chose growth. Debbie Jo chose trust. Danita chose strength. Nancy chose joy. Miss C is using this scripture right here. And um, we're also talking about doing a no spin January as well. Duane's talking about exploring new things without fear. Um, Nanny Joe, peace. So I think I already mentioned that. Okay, honey, I'll see you when you get back. Uh, Ronnie said she might also choose peace for her word. <clears throat> so, Cal, what word are you going to choose to help you for the year? Lindsay hadn't thought about a word, but now she's thinking about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, Blue Skies, you got to think about your word. And I think that's it. Those are all the words. So think about what word you might want to choose to kind of help guide you for the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my, Denise says they live on a hill and they're stuck. Hopefully the snow plow will get there and get you out. I'm doing fine tonight. I'm doing just fine. Oh. Uh, I think that's it. Khadija's thinking. She's got, she's seen several words that she likes. So she'll decide on her word. She can let us know later. Blue Skies is going to look to the Bible. And she says she's in a, a, she's all in for a no spin first quarter. 
So Debbie Joe says her too. You know what? Me too. I sometimes I forget that I'm retired. I'm like, look, you are not working full time. You need to start acting like you're retired and quit spending money. So, but anyway, ladies and gents, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for making this a very pleasant afternoon. I, I needed this time to just sit and chat with other ladies. So I enjoyed it. So thank you guys. So I will see you next time. In the meantime, I'll put another video in the comment section for you guys to click on to check out next. And I'll link the recipe for this is already linked in the description box. And I will link that Oprah Winfrey video in the description box too. Talk to you guys soon. Oh, maybe discipline or self-control. All right, think about it. We'll see. All right, see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, maybe value, maybe evolution. Ooh, I like that word too. Okay, guys, gonna go. Talk to you soon. Bye.